Hey, this is Joe Gilder with Personas. Let's talk about the start page inside of Studio One. All right, just so we're clear, this series of videos, I will be using Studio One Professional. A lot of the stuff I show will be applicable in Artist or even Prime, but this is what I'm using, just so you know. The start page. This is what comes up when you first open Studio One. And there's actually a lot that we can do here, and a few things maybe you didn't know. First of all, top right-hand corner, we've got three buttons here, um, Start, Song, and Project. We'll go over the Song and Project pages in another video. Start is this page. So at any point, point. If you're inside another song or a project, you can actually have multiple open, which is cool. You can always get back to the start page if you need to see something or open something else. So I'm in here working on this song. I'm jamming out. I'm feeling happy. And then I remember, oh, I need to check something on the start page. Just click start. It goes right back. And then guess what? This is still open over there. We can always get back to that as well. Okay. Top right corner. Right here in the middle, we can create a new song. We can create a new project. Again, we'll talk about that. A song is what you use for recording and mixing. A project is for mastering. And then open an existing document just means any existing Studio One file. Our recent files list is here. This is super handy. Uh, I almost always open things from right here. If you hover over a given song or project here, you'll see that it shows you the location. So if you're not sure, hey, which one is this? Where is that one located? Oh, right, it's on my working number one hard drive. Got it, that's the one that I want. That kind of thing there. Artist profile, if you're cool like Gregor, you might put your own picture here. Uh, I'm not cool like Gregor, so I don't have that. SoundCloud, if you have this connected to your SoundCloud account, you'll see some statistics here. You can upload directly to SoundCloud. Again, I don't use that. Uh, down here, this is the part that I use a lot. First thing, check for updates. When you open Studio One and there's a new update, a button will show up up here that will let you know. But if you ever are just curious if there's one, you're not sure, Click that, it'll let you know if you are indeed up to date. Look, I'm up to date, I feel so happy about that. Um, but that's where you check for that. And then here's where you configure your audio device. So maybe you first turn on Open Studio One, and it says something like this, built-in output. That means it's just using your computer's built-in output. Chances are that's not what you want. You wanna use your audio interface. In my case, I'm using the Studio Live 24, so I will set it to Studio Live 24, and that'll show up, and it has a cute picture of the Studio Live as well. We can also see what sample rate we're rocking and where our device block size or buffer setting is. If we wanna configure the audio device or any external devices, so for example, if I've got a fader port connected or an IO station, um, or even my old Yamaha Motif, those are all accessible from here. And then also uh, configuring my audio device, if I want to, like we just did, change the audio device or perhaps change my device block settings, change the processing over here, drop out all that stuff, we'll go over those later. But those are also accessible here. And then here on the right hand side, this is a great place to just, if you're looking for new tips and tricks or any news from Personas, it all shows up right here. And if you have the demos and tutorials installed, uh, that come with Studio One, those will show up here as well. So we've got some sessions and things that you can open right away to start poking around Studio One and get familiar with it. So just, I, I can't say that without showing you. If you're not sure if they're installed, come over to Studio One and come down to Installation. And what you can do is, this will show you kind of everything that you have access to. And if you look under Studio One Demos and Tutorials, as of right now, I've got uh, 1.6 gigabytes worth of tutorials that I can install. And that will automatically do that in the background. And then next time I open Studio One, they will show up here. And that means there's sessions from folks like me and Gregor, mine aren't in there, but and different artists who have used Studio One to create music. So instead of starting with a blank session, maybe you open theirs and see how they laid things out. You can learn a lot by just looking at someone's sessions. So that is the start page. One other really cool thing you may run across, if you have an installer for something, for example, maybe you bought an extension for Studio One or an extra set of sounds, and you've got the installer maybe over here on the desktop. All you have to do is drag it onto the start page, and Studio One will automatically start the installation process. You may have heard people talk about how drag and drop is one of the great things about Studio One. Well, that's an example of that. Even before you get into a song, you can drag things right in, and Studio One usually knows what to do. All right, that's it for the start page. Up next, we'll dive into the song page. Hey, if this video was helpful for you, could you do me a favor, click the like button and also subscribe to the Personas channel. That way you won't miss out on the future episodes of this series as they come. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.